we thank the Lord for our great bishop and his work and his witness in this great church of God. The church of God was, Joe Thorne was church of God from head to foot. And he lived that life and show us how to live. And we hope that we can continue to follow in his footsteps. <clears throat> now we will have brief ministerial remarks. They will come in this order. Bishop Hewlin A. Hanna, Bishop Rudolph V. Bow, Bishop L. Garnett B. Ramming, Bishop Rice H. Thompson, and the last ministerial greeting will be by Bishop Clayton and Martin. They will come in that order. Thank you. Today, as I have come with you to reflect on and celebrate the life of Bishop Joseph M. Swan, I am so humbled that he came into my life at the time God allowed him and the impact that he has had on my ministry throughout the many years. I always knew Bishop Swan, but we rarely became acquainted when he was appointed as senior pastor to the Meadow Street Church of God of Prophecy. There was something altogether different about this humble man of God. He immediately embraced me and saw to it that the gifts which were in me were fully developed. He mentored me and several other young impressionable males in that historic Meadow Street Church. He gave me opportunities and he was unafraid of my youthful exuberance. At the appropriate time, Bishop Swan told me that I would one day become a pastor. Not only was he correct, but in time, I became his pastor. And then he told me that I would become a bishop in our church. This too was proven to be correct. In my secular avocation, Bishop Swan told me that I would rise in the ranks of the Royal Bahamas Police Force and become Commissioner of Police. I left the Royal Bahamas Police Force three years ahead of the time as an assistant commissioner of police. Bishop Swan often said to me that had I remained, I would have gone even further. He had the temerity to tell this to one Keith Mason, one of the more distinguished persons to ever wear our uniform. Somehow, this visionary, Joseph M. Swan, was always ahead of his time and his generation. Bishop Swan's love for young people was demonstrated for all to see. At Meadow Street, he appointed me as the Victory Leaders Band Director, now called Youth Ministries Director. While serving in this capacity, Lillis Bell and I determined that the young people who were transitioning from the Gleaner Band to the VLB were not quite ready for this transition. I approached Bishop Swan and expressed to him the concern Lillis and I shared. He advised us to do what was necessary, and out of this effort came a group called Sprouts. What we now call Sunbeams, a national ministry in the Church of God of Prophecy, was brought to East Street by Michael and Lillis Bell. But it all got started due to the love Bishop Joseph M. Swan had for young people all the way back then. His love for family, ministry, our church and people in general is there also for all to see. It was not uncommon for Valerie and myself to visit his house and before leaving, I would ask Bishop Swan to allow Val and I to kneel in front of him, and he would pray for us. He did this over and repeatedly. Bishop Swan was many things to me and my family, and we will always treasure him and treasure those fond memories. To you, Mother Rosalind Swan, who today, this day, is the only person I allow to call me boy without pushing back at her. 
She would say to me, come here, boy. And one time I challenged her in Meadow Street and I asked her, how dare you call me a boy? I'm a man. And she said, keep quiet, boy, and listen to me. <laughs> but to you, Mother Rosalind, who I love so dearly, on behalf of Val and our children, I extend condolences to you and your family. As your pastor, I take this opportunity on behalf of Bishop Dr. Woodley C. and his dear wife, Vanique Thompson, to proffer sympathies from the East Street Church of God of Prophecy. Our prayers, Mother, are with you and your beloved family. Amen. All of our bishops, pastors, and indeed, this bereaved family, of which everybody claiming Sister Swan and Bishop Swan as their daddy and their mommy. <laughs> so we may as well join the bag, bandwagon <laughs> and claim them all. So let me say that every word I heard here today is the truth. Five minutes is a brief time to say anything what you want to say, but I will stick within the five minutes. That should be a relief for some of you. <laughs> but Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Today we have come to pay our last respect to a, a giant or a great warrior, a soldier, and a prince. Our bishop was not just an ordinary bishop. He was a people's person, a people's bishop, because some of us get that name and we think we have arrived. But trust me, bishops won't live among us to show us what it is that when you get the position, the more humble you should be. He poured himself into thousands. I am only, I could only speak for me. I know what he have done for me. He groomed me and sent me out to pastor. That year when Bishop Thompson called my name, I wonder what Bishop whether he and, and Bishop Swan had any conversation because the man turned his church over to me for three months, didn't preach a line in Angliston, and he allowed me to do everything in Angliston. So I'm saying that here was a man with a vision. He had foresight and Mother Swan, God bless you here. God bless you. God has granted your request. She always tell me, no, I don't, want, I don't want to go first. I want to be here so that I could take care of him. You ladies, learn from that. Take care of your husband. And Mother Swan, God bless you, child. I call one day and I say, what you doing answering this phone? This is my phone. I say, what? 
I said, yes, he said, this is my phone. So I said, well, I guess that's your phone. <laughs> but I want you to know, she had always had that request that I want to be here. I want to see him go first. And, and that's exact when I saw and I sat with her and I said, mother, you got your request. God grant your request. I'm saying to us, brethren and Hewlin, you're right. You're right. Don't let nobody fool you. It's good when you know you could die with all your senses. You didn't have to go around his bed to talk about, I wonder what he could say. What he could say? He said it all along. And I can tell you that Bishop Swan is in heaven and he's awaiting us. Us, bishops, you all hear me? Don't get swing on that name. Bishop. Don't get swing. But make sure Meet the bishop of your soul. The bishop of your soul. Only one in heaven. One in heaven. That's the man Christ Jesus. God bless you. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Bishop Dr. Franklin Ferguson, National Overseer. Bishop Dr. Clayton Martin, General Presbyter. The College of Bishops, including some very outstanding church leaders who I see present among us. Other ministerial colleagues, Mother Minister Roslyn Swan. And may I ask this congregation to please put your hands together and bless God for a great woman of God. Bishop Gailey Swan and the immediate and the entire bereaved family. On behalf of my dear wife, Minister Jacqueline Raming, our family and myself, I proffer deepest and sincerest condolences to you, Mother Swan, and your family on the passing and promotion to glory of our dear brother, Bishop Joseph James MacDonald Swan. You are and you shall ever remain in our thoughts, our prayers, and our love. May the God of all grace and comfort continue to be with you and continue to bless, strengthen, and sustain you in this difficult time. And so weep if you must, mourn if you must, lament if you must, but in the midst of your bereavement and sorrow, take time to give God thanks. Take time to rejoice and to be exceedingly glad. And take time to celebrate the wonderful life and the momentous times of your dear husband, father, grandfather, brother, cousin, in-law, and friend. And I urge and encourage you to do so because in the grand and in the greatest scheme of things, this is all the will and the perfect work of God. Amen. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be condemned. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. As a minister, Bishop Joseph Swan was a relentless warrior for Christ. His commitment was to truth and righteousness. His passion was the preaching of Christ Jesus and the evangelization of the lost. His purpose was to build, to grow, and to expand the work of the body of Christ. 
To that end, he was fierce, fiery, faithful, consistent, and steadfast. Being the general and the giant of a man that he was, he gave much, sacrificed much, and mentored many within and without the Church of God of Prophecy. As my pastor, two of the several things I admired mostly about him were number one, his open display of genuine love, care, and concern for the flock of God. Number two, his willingness to work in an environment of shared leadership responsibilities. Simply put, as my pastor, Bishop Joseph Swan was not in any way, shape, or form a dictator. He was a man who believed in consultation and in consensus. He was a man of vision and of understanding. He was a man given over to leadership by the Holy Spirit. By his acute and effective pastoral care, and by his counsel, encouragement, and support, many of today's leaders in the body of Christ were motivated to give of their best in their pursuit of mainstream ministry. As his bishop, he was diligent in his stewardship and faithful in his duties as business manager in the national offices. And so, as we continue to celebrate the wonderful life and times of Bishop Swan, we give God thanks and prayers for the blessing he was to family, to church, to community, and to our nation and world as a whole. Sleep on, Bishop. Sleep on. Take your well-deserved rest. We shall see you in the morning when the mist are rolled away. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Lying before us today is a champion of the faith, a hero of the church, a kind and gentle servant of the Lord. I'm speaking of the deceased, Joseph James MacDonald Swan. I've been blessed to have known the deceased practically all my life. However, I got to know him better when I became national overseer of the church here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I was able to observe him and I was able to come to a conclusion of the type of individual that he was. He was indeed a dedicated servant of God. There was no wavering in Joseph Swan's spiritual composition. 
He was a man of faith. And he believed in righteousness. Two days before he departed this earth, I was moved in my spirit to give him a call. Of course, we always call one another. I call him sometimes and he calls me. But this time I was deeply impressed to call him. When I call, I note that he didn't recognize who I was right away. But eventually, he did. And he said to me, Bishop, I can't move anymore. They have to move me. And I said to him, I'm sorry to hear that but you are in the hands of the Lord. And he said to me, I serve the Lord to the best of my knowledge and ability. And when he's ready to call me home, I'm ready to go. That was our last conversation about two days before he departed. I thank God for his great contribution to the kingdom of God in this world and indeed to the church. I thank God for his pastoral ministry in Grand Bahama, Freetown, Shirley Street, Angliston, Meadow Street. I thank God for his district work in Grand Bahama, Abaco, and North Andros. He was faithful and ready to do whatever he was asked to do. I thank God for his work at the national office as manager of the office for several years under my administration. Joseph Swan was a blessing. But you know, in this world, like all of us, he had his challenges. And he had his ups and downs. But through it all, he remained steadfast and faithful to Almighty God. Yes, just before he departed this world, he lost his physical mobility. But I think, I heard the scripture say, the trumpet shall sound. Hallelujah. And all the dead in Christ shall rise. And me think, me see Joseph Swan getting up. Six feet in the earth, getting up in woodlawn, joining all the dead in Christ, and going up 
to meet the Lord in the air. Yes, he lost his physical mobility here on this earth. But thank God, when the trumpet sound and the dead in Christ arise he will have his spiritual mobility no wonder Luther G. Presley wrote in sound on that resurrection morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise I'll, I'll, I'll have a new body praise the Lord I'll have a new life Sword in weakness, raised in power, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord. Take courage, Mother Swan. Take courage, children. You're going to see Brother Swan in full mobility again. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'd like to extend greetings to Bishop Dr. Franklin Ferguson, National Overseer, and his family, all other bishops, ministers, to the bereaved family. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. I count it a privilege to be able to come, to share, to let the family know that we have been praying for you. So on behalf of our general overseer, Bishop Sam Clement, and all the general presbyters of the Church of God of Prophecy, and uh, the Church of God of Prophecy family throughout the Caribbean, the national overseers, the pastors, and members, I bring greetings because a great man left us on December 15, 2018. I told my wife, I have a feeling and a sensing that his going was like when Stephen stood up and said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. And I said, this man has been a soldier for Jesus for decades. So no doubt, Jesus must be standing up to salute this soldier as he make, made his grand entrance into the portal beyond. Over 20 years that I have been coming to the Bahamas, I have seen this man a man who displayed the supreme virtue of humility. He was not a swell-headed person, but he displayed that virtue. He contributed to life significantly. And I want for you to know that like Peter Marshall said, the measure of life is not in its duration, but its donation. Look of the many people that he has touched. The lives that he has impacted. His family recognized that he was a great man. And uh, Psalm 112 says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandment. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He has left the greatest legacy, the knowledge 
of the fear of God. Don't let it stop. Keep it going. Join the journey. His race is over. He has handed off the baton to his family who spoke of his commitment. To all of us who have observed his life. And we salute this man of God. The life and the legacy. May God continue to bless those who are coming after. He has made his appointment. We are yet to get there. Be faithful to the end.